Somewhere, deep underground in super-secret laboratories, scientists are trying to create a black hole. It looks like the latest experiment was a success. The black hole hovers above the desk for a moment, but then, in a split second, it swallows it whole. Uh Uh-oh. After its meal, the black hole grows until it is out of control. Microscopes and test tubes fly into the dark void. Soon everything in the room has been consumed. Each time it eats, it grows bigger and bigger and attracts even larger objects. On the surface, people go about their day as usual. Some joggers stop their run when they see a giant black sphere growing in the distance. Houses are torn from their foundations, and cars fly through the air towards the black abyss. In just a few minutes, the black hole has enveloped our entire planet. Then it grows big enough to consume the Moon and Mars. The black hole is now heavier than anything in our solar system. All of the planets begin to circle it, before becoming food for the monster. Finally, even the sun is extinguished in the belly of the beast. Well, that was pretty bleak. Eh, don't worry. This isn't how the scenario would play out in real life. Our scientists may actually be capable of creating a black hole, but it's far safer than this. The effort to make a black hole is led by the scientists working in Geneva on something called the Large Hadron Collider. This machine basically makes particles move at high speeds until they collide. When this happens, they release a lot of energy and create a lot of interesting effects. Scientists think that energy released by these collisions might be enough to create a black hole. Some people were so worried by this that they even tried to ban the construction of the Large Hadron Collider. Luckily, if a black hole did appear, it would be so small that it wouldn't be able to do anything. Black holes actually produce a lot of energy and release it, often as heat like a furnace. That means that they will fade away when they run out of fuel. If one appeared in the experiment, it would instantly burn out and disappear in a billionth of a second. Even if a stable microscopic black hole was created, it would grow so slowly that nothing would happen. Assuming that it survived long enough to absorb the tiny particles around it, a black hole of this size would take about half a trillion years to gain a pound of weight. Black holes could actually be really useful. One with the mass of Mount Everest would emit enough energy to completely power humanity. Even better, black holes are so dense that the one this big would only take up a tiny bit of space. We couldn't create anything as enormous as the naturally occurring black holes, though. Some can weigh hundreds of thousands of times as much as our sun. Recently, scientists have observed a real black hole feast. The sight of a black hole tearing an enormous star apart is one of the most mesmerizing sights in the universe. Heavier and more destructive than anything else in existence, The black hole is both amazing and terrifying. And black holes aren't actually black at all. They're so massive that even light can't escape their pull, meaning that they're actually invisible. Scientists can only find them with special instruments. Most natural black holes are born as stars reach the end of their lifespan. You can picture healthy stars as giant furnaces that burn hydrogen and give off unbelievable amounts of energy. Every second, stars like our Sun produce more energy than humanity has ever produced, which pushes outwards and makes it want to expand. This is what eventually finds its way to Earth as the heat that birthed life on our planet. The only thing stopping this expansion is gravity, a force that basically just pulls objects toward something heavy. Most people know gravity is something that keeps us planted to the ground and stops us from flying off into space. The force of gravity of a star is so strong on stars that it makes them want to implode in on themselves. So, when a star is healthy, the force of gravity pushes inwards, and the energy it releases tries to inflate it like a balloon. These forces mostly cancel each other out and stop it from doing much at all. When a star burns through its fuel, though, nothing is pushing outwards to stop it from collapsing in on itself. Some really big stars make so much energy that they gradually expand into something called a red giant. When they run out of fuel, they cool, and gravity pushes the enormous object into a tiny space. 
Scientists use our sun to measure how big things in space are. Our sun weighs one solar mass. If a light star, like our sun, implodes, not much happens. Which is lucky if you've ever worried about being swallowed up into a black hole. If a red giant around 10 solar masses implodes, though, some incredible things can happen. The collapse of one of these is so intense that it explodes into a supernova, releasing a light as bright as the entire galaxy. Stars that are massive enough to produce supernovas sometimes become black holes. Their weight causes gravity to push down and compact them until they collapse into a black hole in less than a second. The inside of a black hole is mysterious and unexplored, for obvious reasons. One thing we do know is that they're so massive that they can even distort time. One second near the black disk can be equal to weeks or even months on Earth, depending on its size. In 2019, scientists watched a black hole devour a star the size of our sun. Even though it was 860,000 miles wide, the star was completely trapped in the black hole's gravitational field. For a while, they danced around each other, gradually coming closer and closer. Eventually, though, the star was extinguished in the invisible mouth of the black hole. The black hole sometimes releases beams of energy into space. Sizzling plasma flies out at 6,200 miles per second as the black hole finishes destroying the star. About half of the star's mass is consumed, while the rest is ejected into space. Incredibly, these insatiable titans even consume other black holes when they get big enough. The collision of two black holes was recently witnessed by scientists when one, weighing in at 85 solar masses, met another that was 66 solar masses. When black holes interact, the bigger one always swallows the smaller, adding even more mass to itself. The resulting black hole here reached 142 solar masses big. It's hard to believe, but this is still very small for a black hole. It will continue to consume everything around it and might even reach the size of a supermassive black hole at some point. These are unbelievably big and destructive. Our entire galaxy, the Milky Way, rotates around the gravitational field of one of these supermassive black holes. This monster weighs around 4 million solar masses or more than a trillion times our planet. And that isn't even the biggest they get. It's also theorized that black holes can be made without a dramatic explosion. Big gas clouds that weigh hundreds of thousands of solar masses could condense under the force of their gravity to make a star. This object would already be so heavy that it would continue to compact until it became a black hole, skipping the supernova stage. Supermassive black holes are so far away and hard to observe that scientists doesn't have a full understanding of them yet. We don't know much about what happens inside a black hole, leading to a lot of speculation. For decades, people have theorized about how we could use black holes. Knowing that black holes distort time means that someone could use it to travel to the future with the right technology. If it was possible to build a ship strong enough to withstand the powerful gravitational fields, it would be simple. All they would need to do is decide how far they want to go and fly around the outside of the black hole. In the few minutes or hours they spent near the time warp, years could have passed back on Earth. They could be thousands of years old without having aged at all physically. Wow, that's officially a mind blower. The main question of all time goes like this. What was there before the Big Bang? The most common theory claims that about 13.7 billion years ago, before this incredible rapid expansion occurred, the universe existed as a singularity. It was a point tinier than a subatomic particle. At least, that's what the Big Bang theory tells us. Okay, but what was before that? This question has been bothering the minds of the greatest cosmologists for at least 1,600 years. For example, 4th century theologian St. Augustine was trying to figure out the answer to the question of what had existed before the universe was created. He made a conclusion that the phrase, in the beginning, mentioned in the Bible, implied that nothing had existed before that. He also believed that time and the universe 
had been created simultaneously. The ancient Greeks were also bothered by the same question and kept debating the origin of time. Philosopher and scientist Aristotle, for instance, took the no beginning side. He thought that nothing could come out of nothing. In other words, to get a universe, you need to have something for this universe to appear from. And since the universe couldn't have gone from nothingness to somethingness, it must have existed forever. That's why time must stretch eternally into the past and future. In the early 20th century, the world got to know about Albert Einstein's theory of general relativity. According to this theory, mass warps time, making it run a bit more slowly for, let's say, a human standing on Earth's surface and a satellite orbiting our planet. Based on Einstein's work, other ideas started to pop up, including the one that stated that the universe started as a singularity and expanded through the Big Bang. Then, quantum physics came into play. It gave birth to a bunch of new theories, which brought forth the questions about the pre-Big Bang universe again. And aren't these ideas fascinating? Some researchers believe that our universe is just an offspring of another much older universe. According to them, the evidence for this theory can be found in the Cosmic Microwave Background, CMB, which is the relic radiation left over from the Big Bang. But let me explain. For the first time, astronomers observed the Cosmic Microwave Background in 1965. At that time, they didn't know it would soon create problems for the Big Bang Theory, challenging its ideas and postulates. Now. According to the inflation theory, an extremely rapid expansion of the universe occurred in the very first moments of its existence. This theory accounts for the changes in temperature and density in the CMB. It also claims that these fluctuations should be uniform. But recent mapping results show that the universe is actually lopsided. More fluctuations occur in some areas than in others. This makes some scientists believe that our universe bubbled off a parent universe. There's also a chaotic inflation theory, which takes this concept even further. It believes in an endless progression of bubbles, each eventually becoming a universe. And each of these appearing universes gives birth to even more bubbles, which results in an immeasurable multiverse. There are other models too. Some of them revolve around the pre-Big Bang singularity and black holes. If we think of these space monsters as cosmic trash compactors, they might end up being the main candidates for primordial compression. And our rapidly expanding universe could be a white hole output from a black hole dwelling in another universe. A white hole is a hypothetical object that acts in the opposite way to a black hole. Instead of pulling everything inside, it constantly gives off energy and matter. There's also the big bounce theory. Its main idea is that instead of going through one Big Bang, the universe expands and contracts in a cycle, bouncing back every time it shrinks to a certain size. Each cycle, therefore, begins with a tiny, smooth universe that gradually grows, becoming more warped with time. And eventually, it starts to collapse, smoothing itself out before starting anew. If you liked or disliked our video, put a like or dislikes. Leave comments. Let's discuss the mysteries of the universe together. And now don't leave, the video will continue. You're dashing through space in your state-of-the-art spaceship. It's the year 3023, and by now people have figured out how to travel at the speed of light. Your equipment works properly and doesn't show anything out of the ordinary. But suddenly, you feel it, an overwhelming pull. You check the region of space you're traveling through and see something that makes your hair stand on end. You're heading straight into the heart of a supermassive black hole. You didn't notice it before because these space monsters have such an immense gravitational pull that even light can't escape their clutches. So they're literally black. What happens next is hard to describe. Time and space are getting warped. And you can't understand what's happening to you and your spaceship. Normally, your story would finish here. But for some unfathomable reason, you survive and are spewed with great force in... Actually, you have no idea where you are. But what you do understand is that a black hole wouldn't let you go so easily. So, 
What on earth is this thing you've just left? Could it be... a white hole? This is a theoretical cosmic region functioning in the opposite way to a black hole. While nothing can escape a black hole, nothing can enter a white hole. You turn around. The white hole, if it really is a white hole, looks exactly like a black one. Your equipment shows that it has a certain mass. It also seems to be spinning. You also spot a faint disk of dust and gas gathered around the event horizon, a bubble boundary separating the insides of the white hole from the rest of the universe. And then, you witness something incredible. A belch. That's when you finally realize you might be the first person to find a real white hole. While the event horizon of a black hole prevents stuff from escaping in white holes, this boundary doesn't let things enter it. And if we assume that black holes don't destroy any information that gets inside, there must be a way for this information to come back out. So can this something helping information escape be a white hole? So far, white holes are only a theory. You can imagine them as black holes in reverse. Another question is how white holes might form. One of the most popular theories claims that a white hole could be a black hole that has almost collapsed in on itself and then exploded outward again. No one has seen it, obviously. But inside a black hole, there might be a long tube. It gets longer and narrower until it reaches the point in which it gets so narrow that quantum effects make it bounce back. And then this super long and super narrow tube starts getting thicker and wider again. And that's how a white hole is born. But what could make a black hole want to turn itself inside out? Quantum mechanics states that many things we perceive as continuous are actually granular. For example, let's take light. It's not a continuous wave, it's made up of photons. So if we apply quantum mechanics to space itself, we'll find out that the cosmos is granular too. It means a black hole can't squeeze stuff down to infinity. At some point it will reach its minimum size. And this matter, or whatever is falling down the black hole, will have to stop and bounce back, giving birth to a white hole. What matter might a white hole spit out? Some experts think it could be ordinary electromagnetic radiation. It'd probably be unrecognizable from what originally fell into the black hole since things get horrendously squashed after entering black holes. Black holes are known to absorb everything, matter and energy. As for white holes, they would expel everything, almost like anti-gravity, endlessly ejecting material. To discover a white hole, we probably need to look for a place where matter would be ejected with enormous force and a lot of energy. Imagine a giant star, a space object with ginormous mass, collapsing down into gravitational singularity. This is a region of space where the density of matter becomes infinite. In such areas, the standard concepts of space and time don't have any meaning anymore. No wonder such objects have captured our imagination. These days, we even have a few photos of black holes, or rather, the space around them. The first photo of a black hole's event horizon was taken in 2019. The event horizon is a point of no return on the outskirts of a black hole. When something, for example, matter, radiation, or light reaches this boundary, there is no way for it to escape. We can use the event horizon to estimate the size of the black hole. The larger it is, the more massive the black hole you've come across is. An international team of scientists that consisted of more than 200 astronomers had been working for years to get this result, and eventually their efforts paid off. The black hole, the region around which they managed to capture, is about 55 light years away from Earth, at the center of the galaxy M87. People saw this amazing image thanks to the work of a vast global network of telescopes called the Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration, or simply EHT. Scientists created a virtual telescope that turned out as big as our planet by combining the power of eight radio telescopes. But it was tricky. The researchers had to simultaneously point the telescopes in a meticulously planned order with the help of precise atomic clocks set on each telescope. But even though now we kind of know what a black hole looks like from the outside, we haven't figured out what might be waiting for us on the other side. 
Many people imagine black holes as bizarre portals to other worlds, dimensions, or parallel universes. We'll get back to these theories a bit later. So, why not jump into a black hole and go all the way to the other side? Unfortunately, such an escapade is bound to end tragically. If something gets close to a black hole, there's no escape. You might argue that you don't need to go back. After all, you want to explore what's ahead. True, but there's another problem. The force of gravity around a black hole increases dramatically the closer you come. It even creates the effect of spaghettification when an object gets stretched into thin strands of space pasta due to the effects of gravity. When spaghettified, the matter then gets pulled into the black hole's orbit and flattened into a swirling and glowing disk of material. And eventually, this matter settles into a nice orbit around the black hole, quite far away from the point of no return. And that's not how you want your space adventure to end. Well, I don't. Getting something to cross the event horizon isn't as easy as it may seem. The material needs to be pushed out of its stable orbit around the black hole. In other words, something must make it fall in, just like it happens with the Sun and Earth. Despite the star's enormous gravity, our planet doesn't get pulled towards it, right? One of the few reasons why the material might cross the event horizon is collisions between particles. By crashing into one another, they gain some energy, and that's enough to send them spiraling into a black hole. An object entering a black hole is instantly transformed. From the outside, it would seem as if the object starts moving more slowly, because time distorts near the event horizon of a black hole. From the perspective of the object falling into the space monster, it would take an infinite amount of time for it to become a part of the black hole. When it happens, its mass will be added to that of the black hole. But even if you somehow manage to survive entering a black hole, you wouldn't be able to come out on the other side. Now, I might disappoint you right now, but black holes don't go anywhere. There aren't any holes involved. And the space phenomena aren't even black. Or at least that sort of black. Black holes might seem inky because even light can escape their clutches. But this has nothing to do with their color. Anyway, when you cross a black hole's event horizon, all paths lead to the singularity, even if we talk about a photon of light moving directly away from it. But the main problem here is that singularities are mathematically impossible. That's why some scientists suggest that when all this weird stuff happens inside the black hole, its mass gets linked to the expansion of the entire universe. And such a black hole is like a rubber band, stretching along with the universe as it expands. And as it stretches, its energy increases. And since mass and energy are proportional, the mass of the black hole increases too. But this new mass creates a pressure that makes the universe expand even more. That's the reason the universe is expanding faster and faster all the time. Wow, that sounds insane. Then, there's also a theory about parallel universes. And this multiverse theory takes it all one step further. Those who believe in it state that there might be countless realities. According to this theory, we live in a bubble that is just one of many other bubbles. And these bubbles constantly pop up and vanish. And guess what? Right, black holes might be tunnels between these universes. Or rather, not tunnels, but wormholes. This idea that black holes could be wormholes leading to other galaxies or universes has been around for some time. It gained some fresh ground in the 1980s when a discussion started about whether an object could physically travel through such a tunnel. But since there's no firm evidence that a black hole can allow for such a passage, this remains just an idea. But if black holes lead to other galaxies or other universes, there must be something opposite to them on the other side. That's where the concept of white holes comes into play. So far, white holes are only a theory. You can imagine them as black holes in reverse, or as a ball that falls to the ground and then bounces up again. In other words, everything that falls in bounces and comes out through the white hole. But how might white holes form? 
One of the theories speculates that a white hole might be a black hole that has almost collapsed in on itself and then exploded outward again. What if inside a black hole, there's a long tube that keeps getting longer and narrower until it reaches the point in which it gets so narrow that quantum effects make it bounce back? And then the super long and super narrow tube is getting thicker and wider again. And we've got a white hole on our hands. But then, what could make a black hole want to turn itself inside out? According to quantum mechanics, many things we perceive as continuous are granular. Even light is not a continuous wave, it's made up of photons. So if we apply quantum mechanics to space itself, we'll find out that the cosmos is granular too. It means a black hole can't squeeze stuff down to infinity. At some point, it will reach its minimum size. And this matter, or whatever is falling down the black hole, will have to stop and bounce back, giving birth to a white hole. What matter would such a white hole spit out? Some experts think it could be ordinary electromagnetic radiation. It would be unrecognizable from what originally fell into the black hole, since things get horrendously squashed after entering black holes. And while black holes have an event horizon, White holes would have a reversed event horizon. It would prevent anything from entering a white hole. And because of this feature of white holes, if you decided to travel to one, you wouldn't be able to even get close to it. 